We came back on country so we can stay here. My name is um, Catherine Gunek. I'm a traditional owner of Honorable Country. Um, my area called community called Candywell, and the, but the whole area is called Nauru around the plateau. Yeah, um, in this in this land we. I'm very connected to this country for Nauru because of my grandfather, it is his area. The old people wanted to get their country back, but it came to the community about a couple of times when these kids been having their school holidays. Then my grandfather started to fight for, to come back on country to get the um, native title. They They'd only sort of had their uh, lease from the mining company for a couple of years. And the first, there were no buildings. They, they, the mining company was exceedingly generous and, and left concrete slabs when they pulled the buildings down, uh, which they at one point had promised to the community when they left. They took everything and just left, left our slabs never left anything for us, yeah. Uh, and in 89, when I came through, they had uh, uh, they'd been able to erect some tents. It was that year that I first met some of those old people that were still around in those days. But I, of course, I didn't know these men well but, uh, at that point, but I could understand that they were trying to establish a community in a place that uh, was that far removed from everywhere else in the Kimberley. Very, the most remote place in the Kimberley, really. And, uh, uh, and, and they were very determined to get a community going and to keep it there. Yeah, we wanted to, we wanted to have the school here because, um, for the kids to grow up in and have the education because a lot of things was going in are bad things in the town for drinking. The old men wanted their, their children, their grandchildren and their grandchildren's children to be back on country, uh, not to be in a place like Derby or Broome or uh, towns, of, uh, these towns are poison to bush people. They, um, and kids don't have a, uh, the upbringing they should have in places like that. There's, there's crime, there's, there's alcoholism, there's drug addiction, just the sort of stuff you don't want to be bringing kids up in. The community itself is an absolute safe haven. They in the bush, they go hunting, fishing, they do anything around here, you know, it's quiet and peaceful and, you know, I'm glad that I grew up on country and I really want the kids to learn from the older people. And we also go hunting down to Port or Yalgi for some killer, some turtle, crocodile, guana, emu, uh, turkey, and that's how we get our feed. We wanted the kids to and asked to live here, so we got the school of the air. So each child has their own laptop um, and their teachers, as I said, are in Derby. Um, I find this difficult with the kids. Um, these kids are bush kids. They, they're used to being out in the bush. So sit them in a room on a laptop, 
doesn't quite work at times. I mean, they do well on country learning is the best way that these kids learn. I want to do that, you know, like I want to share, share the knowledge with the kids, like you know, no matter sing robberies and all that and show them like what I've been learned from my grandparents. I want, I want them, them to think, you know, now that our grandparents are not here, I'm the one who's going to be like a teacher to them now, you know, showing them all that, like robberies and all that and showing them the art side something. And those traditions, these young kids need to learn. They, they, this is their identity. And there's many examples of people who have lost their identity uh, elsewhere in the world. And it's not a pretty sight. Uh, but here's the opportunity for some of these people to, to not only uh, protect their identity, but to pass it on again to future generations. And that, that takes some support the community want them to know culture. Without language, without culture, you, without language your culture dies. Here's this little struggling school that, that, that's, that's um, scratching around for funding and being run on a shoestring, uh, where there should be traditional owners here helping teach the young people their own language, their own stories, their own country, not talking about elephants from Africa or some or European history or learning bloody Indonesian, for God's sake, I don't believe it. That's not what Aboriginal kids in their own country should be learning. But beyond that, why should you learn a foreign language when you, can, when you could be learning your own language and your own identity? And that's going to be more important to these people. There's only a few left that speak language. And I know um, that that is a concern to them. There's family members who are willing and wanting to move back here to teach the next generation. However, there's no housing for them. Um, and I know community want culture taught in the school. In our way, if we keep things to ourselves, like robberies and all that, I think other people will talk and they'll say, oh, how come you're not sharing? sharing his knowledge with his own mob, you know what I think. Something could happen to you, keeping that, all that thing to yourself and you're not sharing it. Tourism in the future is going to, going to be screaming for cultural tourism and, and experience with people who know country properly. And that's what this little school is all about. If you don't share it, you'll break down, you'll lose everything. You'll get very, very sick. But we're sharing with you, we're carry, uh, sharing your knowledge and everything with, your, with, with the young ones and things like that. It makes you stronger. Even the country too makes you lift up more. You know, you're lifting the country up and you yourself. You know, making yourself proud of what you're doing, sharing your knowledge with the kids. You know? yeah. So we needed the school building and things. So we. Um, try to um, save up a bit of money just to, just, we couldn't get it a school from the government, so we had to get it out from our own. We, had to, we have to pay, pay the school teachers to stay here with their own money, with the community money, yeah, funding, yeah, to keep them here. There have been so many hurdles thrown in front of this community since those old men passed away by bodies that are supposed to be in support of Aboriginal communities, bodies funded by the federal government in fact, that are supposed to support communities have not been supportive and in fact they've tried to cut this community off from uh, all support from anywhere and uh, it, it, there have been difficult years here. The leases were transferred away from this community without knowledgeable consent. And that's not fair. It should not happen, but it did happen. And the community has had to fight time and again just to get surety of tenure in their own land. And they're the traditional owners. 
so it's good. So we're trying to get more houses in. We're trying to, but too much. Here, yeah, families want to all come back. We get column roll mob, broom mob, and you know, some from Derby trying to come back to country, but we hardly we lack of houses. So they all want to come back, but they get no housing and nowhere to stay. You do only get little tin shacks. Yeah. Uh, we're very remote and we don't have any doctors or yeah, or clinics around here. You know, immunizations, um, anything for the for the kids, to the younger children, dentists. I've been here for a year and a half. There's been they've never seen a dentist. We know for a fact that Aboriginal people, Australia wide, the first groups came into this country around seventy odd thousand years ago, give or take. And one of the prime areas for entry into Australia is this very area here. This is a very ancient land and it's a very ancient uh, lineage of people who have been custodians for this country. And now the young people coming up, they need to have the best possibility and the best opportunity to carry on what people have been doing here for tens of thousands of years, literally. We're trying to get families back on country to um, help out generation to you know know their culture and how when we do our dancing June by and everything they everybody know all the young kids they grow up so that the next generation can have that you know to see so they can learn their generation and the next one you know keep going so our could our traditional one won't fade away, yeah. For the school and the kids to keep going with the school and to have the, um, at the same time, to keep going with the cultural things and never forget that, where they come from. And you can go on both wheels. Like I want to share it with my little gang, you know, up here in the community, share the, Junba and Wanka and all that, so they can do thing, you know. So they can have their little properties up there in Mitchell Federal. But you know, end of the day, this is a paradise for us, and we can we can't leave here. This is our home. Hey. Right. One more, one more, one more.